Hello everyone. We're going to be going over logistic regression using Python, specifically using scikit-learn. So the first data set that we're going to tackle is sklearn's contained digits data set, which is really just a series of 8x8 eight eight images. Um, this, however, is too small of a data set to be representative of a real-world machine learning task. So after we tackle the small, easy to work with digits data set, we're going to go over a little bit harder mince data set, which is a bit more complicated to work with because we'll first have to download the data, unzip the data, um, and then it'll take longer to fit the data in the end as well. Okay, so first things first, we'll go over the digits data set. So the first thing we have to do is we'll have to import our libraries and the associated methods with them. So we'll import load digits, and what this will do for you is it's a one-liner that basically just loads all the data you'll need for this task. It'll give you digits.data, which are 1,797 8 by 8 images for a dimensionality of 64. It'll also give us digits.target, which are the labels that correspond to those uh, images that we have over here. Okay. So now if you actually want to see the images and the labels, i.e. the targets, you can see them over here, where digits.data, this over here, are the first five images. And digits.target, these are the first five labels, which again correspond to the images. Okay, so this is the zero, this is the one, this is the two, this is the three, and this is a four. Okay. So with any supervised machine learning task, we have to split our data into training and test sets. The reason being is that we'll use our training data to learn the relationship between our features, which are our images, and our responses, our labels, in the hope that when we feed it uh, images it hasn't seen before, it'll be able to make predictions which are accurate with our test labels, okay? So we'll have a 75-25 split what this means is 75% of our images and corresponding labels will be in our training set. So 75% of uh, 1797 is going to be roughly 1347, okay? And it's a corresponding labels. The remaining 25% of those images are going to be in our test data, okay? So the next thing we want to do is we want to learn um, SK learns four-step modeling pattern. So the first thing you have to do is import the model you want to use. So I'm going to import logistic regression. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make an instance of the model. Okay, and this is also a time where you can also tune your parameters. Um, for this small example, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, all this stuff you'll typically learn with more experience. Um, basically, if you want to improve the performance of your model, a lot of times you'll tune your parameters. Um, if it's also taking too long, you can change your solver. Um, and if you don't know what that means, that's okay. Um, you'll learn that with experience. And I'll have a link to the documentation in the mince uh, data set in a sec. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is we're going to want to train the model on the data. Um, Basically, the model is going to learn the relationship between our digits and our labels on our training data set so that when we provide it new digits from our test data set, it'll be able to predict the labels. Okay? So for the first image in our test data set, it predicted a 2. And then you can also feed um, sklearns predict multiple images, and it'll give you multiple predictions. Okay? Oops, one sec. Okay. And then you can also use it to make predictions on your entire test data set. Okay. So one thing you want to do is you want to see how good um, your model is. And the good way to measure model performance is by its accuracy. Basically, it's fraction of correct predictions, which is the co total number of correct predictions over the total number of data points. So what the score method does in sklearn is in this case, it'll take 
our images, our X test. It'll make predictions on them, and then it'll compare the predictions with the actual labels, which is Y test. And you'll see that you're correct 95% of the time for the model that we fit. Okay. So another useful way to you know visualize your model performance is by a confusion matrix. And what a confusion matrix is, is a table that is often used to describe the performance of a classification model on a set of test data for which the true values are known. So true values are known, this is just referring to our Y test, I mean our actual labels, versus our predictions, okay? So this is matplotlib's code for a heat map confusion matrix, or a, heat, a confusion matrix that's visualized as a heat map, okay? And it's a bit complicated. If you don't understand this code, that's okay. Um, down below, I'll have an example using Seaborn. So what we can see from this confusion matrix is our model correctly predicted A1 as an actual label um, when it was predicted to be a one. However, um, our model predicted A6 when the label is actually a one twice, and it predicted an eight twice when the actual label was a one, okay? And part of the reason why I like using confusion matrices is to see where my classifier uh, made mistakes. Oftentimes, you'll find that your model made mistakes in one class way more than another class. Um, it's just a good tool to have. Also, I find it's very pretty for presentations. Um, and this is just the same thing uh, using Seaborn. You have to install Seaborn. Um, so if you have a conda environment, you can do conda install, or you can do a pip install, one of the two. It's really just the same thing. Um, it's just less code that you have to actually write. Okay. Another thing I like doing is I like displaying the misclassified images with predicted labels. So as you'll see over here, the model predicted a three when Y test for that image was actually a two. Um, it predicted a six when it was actually a one. Um, and you'll see as well that the model predicted an eight when it was actually a one. And this is just um, reinforcing that our model predicted six multiple times when the label is actually a one. The model predicted uh, eight multiple times when it was actually a one. And you can see that down here as well. Okay, now we're gonna go over the mince data set. The way the mince data set differs from the digits data set, among other reasons, is the mince data set has 70,000 samples, whereas the digits data set we just worked with had 1,747. So the data set's bigger. Additionally, the images for the mince data set are 28 by 28 for a dimensionality of 784, whereas the data set we just worked with, the digits data set, was eight by eight for a dimensionality of 64. So what this really means in practical terms is the data set's bigger, as well as we're gonna have to download the data set, unzip it, and load it versus before uh, the digits data set had a load digits method, which was a lot more convenient. So next thing you have to do is go to this website. Um, it's Jan LeCun's website. He's a very famous person. Um, you click on these links, you can save the files, and then you have to unzip them. You have to click on all four and unzip. Um, if this is an issue for you, if you have trouble downloading or unzipping the data set from his site for some strange reason, um, what you can also do is you can go on my GitHub and download the data that way, um, and it's already unzipped. Okay? So. Let's go over the code. So like before, the first thing we have to do is import our different libraries and associated methods. OK? Um, next is the process of you know downloading the data set. If you already download the data set, don't go over these cells. Just ignore them. Um, I'll comment them out, actually. If you want to download the data sets using wget or curl, you can do it this way. But I find clicking the links is actually just easier, honestly. OK? 
okay? Um, you have to unzip the files. So I use gzip. If not, again, go to my GitHub. Okay? So here's a function that is very similar to load digits, um, except for the fact that you have to write it out yourself. Um, and what this will do is this will load our data set. Okay? This will take a second. So I'll pause the video. Now that our data set is done loading, I want to show you that train image is just 60,000 images that are 28 by 28. Train label are just the labels associated with those images. And test image is just 10,000 images that are 28 by 28. And test labels are just the labels associated with test image. Okay? So now we're going to visualize the digits again like we did in the previous tutorial. You'll see that this is, these are the first five train images and these are the labels associated with them. So this is a five for this image, this is zero for this image, um, this is a four and so on and so forth, okay? So it's important to note that what the computer sees is very different. It just sees a bunch of numbers um, and these are just pixel intensities. So the larger the number, um, the brighter it is for the image, or the brighter the pixel is for you to see. Okay? Okay, and now it's just the same simple process. We're gonna do logistic regression using sklearn. And the first step, as before, is to import logistic regression. We're gonna make an instance of the model um, this time, what we're changing is we're changing the parameter solver. Um, if you don't know what that is, uh, feel free to click the link and you can go over sklearn's documentation. Um, the method will make the fitting faster, not better, but faster, at least for this tutorial. And it'll take a second to fit the model. Well, by a second, I mean a couple minutes. So I'll pause the video. Now that we fit the model, we're going to predict labels of new data, so of new images that we feed the model. Okay? So we're going to give it a test image, in this case just one image, and we predicted that it's a 7. And as before, you can use the predict method to predict multiple images at once. Okay? And again, you can measure model performance, do confusion matrices, and so on and so forth. Um, that's it for this tutorial. Please, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, I tried to simplify this as best I could. Um, if you have any issues, let me know. And please subscribe if you can. I appreciate it. Thanks.